So just talk to us a little bit about how you got involved in all this sort of ancient sites and interesting stuff, just a little background. Well, I've been interested in ancient enigmas since I was a little kid, and I think all little kids are interested, except I didn't grow out of it, whereas most kids do. woke up one morning and this little voice in my head said, Peru, four times. And I went, oh, I've never been. Oh, there's Machu Picchu in Peru. So when I came here the first time, um, I hired a guide who tried to explain to me how all of these megalithic works were done. And I just said, no, you know, you're, you're talking nonsense. You know, you're, a Bronze Age culture is able to shape granite and basalt. Something's going on here. And then the more that I spent time here, I, I knew that there had to have been an older culture that had lost ancient high technology, similar to Egypt. Um, and so I just, I follow my heart and this is where my heart is. Really good evidence that Cusco existed before was the fact that the Inca a thousand years ago were kicked out of Lake Titicaca by the Aymara people. And so rather than dispersing, they went, they knew that they would um, find a place to resettle. And they followed a road that existed north. And um, when they got to within one hour's drive of Cusco, there is a big wall with a, a gate in it. That's called the Intipunku, and that is megalithic. When they found that, I think that's when they decided, rather than follow the Inca Trail into the sacred valley, because they were following the sacred river from Lake Titicaca this way, by normal nature they would have followed the river down into the sacred valley, but instead they encountered this gate, and I'm sure they said, what's beyond the gate? And uh, as they followed the gate, they encountered megalithic structures. By the time they reached Cusco itself, they found an abandoned city that was megalithic. And so blown away by this fact that I'm sure they said, maybe, this was the city of the gods. This is where we're going to build our new capital. And so the Cori Cancha existed at that time. And because of its energetic nature, uh, I and profound construction, I believe that Manco Capac simply said, this is too profound for me to live in. I get first choice of all of the other megalithic structures. And so he looked up on the hill, which is exactly where we are, and he found uh, what is called San Cristobel, or San Cristobal, and he said, rebuild this megalithic ruin and make it my palace. And a policy of the Inca was that each of the 12 Inca in succession had what was called a panaca, and that means they chose who did what, like who was in charge of the military, who was in charge of the, the priesthood, etc., etc., and it had to be a member of the family. But when that high Inca died, the son who inherited the title of High Inca got to choose his own government and people, which is a very smart move. So what you had was the son of Manco Capac could not live where we are in, in Manco Capac's palace, so he had to uh, find another place to live. And so he would have one of the other megalithic courtyards rebuilt. By the time you get to the eighth High Inca, there were no more megalithic uh, ruins to be restored, so that's where we find that the 9th, the 10th, the 11th all had to build their structures from scratch. And what we see there is they're all made of little blocks or adobe. No megalithic work. So if the Inca were responsible for the megalithic work, it meant they had profound capability in the beginning and slid downhill for the next 500 years, which is not the case. They simply found an abandoned megalithic city and rebuilt it. You know, the Inca's role was to build buildings. 
um, out of what was available. So they recycled some of the damaged structures from uh, the early megalithic builders. What's intriguing about the Inca is that they appear to have been incredibly respectful of whoever it was that first built Cusco. They, would, they seemingly would never touch any of the, of the surfaces and remove something. But if something was on the ground, it's like, well, we don't know where that goes, so let's use it to build something around it or to enhance what's already been here. Oyente Tambo, Machu Picchu, Saxe Waman being very classic examples of that. But the megalithic builders would go as far as was required, which is, is a, a similar thing we find in Egypt. Um, they had to have stone that either had a high crist, uh, quartz crystal content or iron content. So the basalt, um, which is what this is, possibly, comes from a, one quarry 50 kilometers in that direction. And um, then there's the limestone, which sucks Waman, which is right here and its quarry is about 10 to 15 kilometers in that direction. Um, and there are other quarries too, uh, of great distance. And the, the important thing for the megalithic builders was any structure could only be constructed out of stone from one quarry. They, they never mixed the stone. It all had to be the same quality because of the characteristics that they were after, which is almost science fiction. So this is the original, probably, construction uh, Inca that Manco Capac had done. He was the first of the high Inca. So it's about a thousand years old. But what you'll notice is the lintels, or the tops of each one of those niches, is linear. And it's actually a different material. and it's basalt, so we can say automatically that the Inca found an abandoned site here that was megalithic in nature, and it was made out of basalt. And the basalt is from a quarry 50 kilometers that way, whereas all the andesite, which is the Inca construction, is local stone. This is obvious. Right. Underneath, this is basalt, again, from a quarry 50 kilometers away. Right. On top of it is Inca construction, right. because the Spanish knew what concrete was. As soon as they came here, they found sources of, of materials to make concrete, and so they would have used concrete. But the Inca, in this case, uh, this may not have been super significant to the Inca. That's why they didn't do nice, tight work. But you have the difference. Andesite, local, basalt, from a great distance. Strange depressions, and sometimes protrusions. Here's, one of the, here's a classic knob type thing. You can see it could, you could lash, or put a rope under here to help lift it. The problem is, it's not in the center. So since it's not in the center, it would go that way. Yeah. So it had to, and this one here, another one. Yeah. Colonial Spanish with concrete. And then megalithic. The Inca likely found this the way it is and uh, didn't touch it but they would have used the stone that had fallen down and recycled it to rebuild um, what was uh, Manco Capac's palace. And, you know, it's, it's obvious in many of the streets of Cusco. You'll see a complete um, andesite wall with this rectangular block of basalt stuck into it. And that isn't because it's artistic or because it's for strength. It's because it was lying on the ground. and. Why not use it? And you see, if this is the quality of Inca craftsmanship, that's much, much better. If this was all by, done by the same masons, this would be far more refined. Um, but it's not, because this is 
This was shaped using probably meteorite iron. Most of it is lost because the Spanish destroy, tried to destroy as much of their knowledge as possible. But luckily, there are bits and pieces still remaining. And, and when the Spanish first saw Sacsayhuaman, they were blown away because nothing like that exists of that quality in Europe. And they said, did you build this? And they just laughed and said, no, this was here when we got here. And that tells you that Inca, or that Cusco is a much older city. Every tour guide here will say that the, the fine work is called Imperial Inca because the Inca family, um, who were the Inca, the general population were not the Inca, they were native people, but the royal family of the Inca, who were about uh, 1,000 people maybe, um, it was a very tight bloodline. Um, you know, the story is that they would say, well, I want the nicest palace, but that's corrupted information because that comes from Europe. All of, all of the chronicles that the Spanish wrote are corrupted stories because they were racist and they were stupid. They were basically mercenaries. And they were zealots too. Well, and, and, and they were Catholic zealots as well. And, and anyone who's a zealot of any religion means that they're insecure. So that's what they say, the, you know, the Inca who is the, <clears throat> the Inca king, and he was not a king, of the Inca empire, and it was not an empire decided that, you know, I want the nicest palace made, and that's not true. The only thing you, the only way you could do that is to be able to make the stone light. And that means, again, th these people or beings had the capability of using vibrational technologies be beyond Star Trek, probably and they were able to match the, vib the vibrational characteristics of basalt and, uh, and granite and granodiorite somehow to be able to either levitate the stone or make it so light that it was like styrofoam. And they were able to manipulate matter um, basically capable of turning super hard stone into the consistency of toffee temporarily. And I think that's how they did the polygonal construction because every stone is a different shape and size and any stonemason will tell you that's insane you don't do that you know if you're building a building you you do if, if you have the capability of uh, of creating a product you make each one uniform that way you know how long the wall is and how many stones you need but if you do it where every stone's a different shape and size that compounds the difficulty a hundred or a thousand fold Well, the level of erosion is incredible. It's much more than on the other surfaces. So it could very well be that there was a first civilization that was simply cutting surfaces for something like all these so-called thrones of which there are thousands of. Um, and then you have the more, you know, and it's quite crude work. Um, and then you have the much more refined megalithic stuff and then you have the Inca after that. So I, I think Jesus is still correct that there are probably three um, ages. Um, but the most, uh, the most refined stuff seems to be the, the second culture. I would say there are two basic styles with variation, and the style that was used depended upon the function of, the, um, of what they were building. So the polygonal is the most famous that you see at Saxo Oman, Oyente Tambo, the Inca Roca wall, green wall down here, and then you have an almost but not completely linear rectangular construction, um, which is what you find at the Cori Cancha, and which I'll, also I will show, show you up here. Um, and the type of stone, again, depended upon uh, the function. Um, andesite was not used very much by the megalithic builders for some reason, an important reason. It was mainly the granite, or granodiorite and basalt that they were again going to whatever length was required to, uh, to access it. Yeah. And, and you're right, the Valley Temple 
is about as similar as you can get to, to here. But what we find in Egypt is um, here we have organic construction. And in Egypt, we more have a Western European kind of linear construction. You notice like beautiful straight lines. You don't find any straight lines here, except Pumapunku and Tiwanaku, which don't match anything on the planet. That's what makes it so weird. Well, we've had it nailed into our heads that real civilization began 6,000 years ago in the Indus Valley and Mesopotamian stuff. And Gobekli Tepe is finally the most obvious example um, of a sophisticated site that was built 12,000 plus years ago. It was supposedly buried 12,000 years ago. And so that shows that um, people were quite sophisticated at that time. They had to be able to coordinate each other to be able to find the stone, move it, set it up, um, you know, line, line the stones up to the different um, celestial and, and lunar alignments and stuff like that. So it's technically, it's not very impressive looking as compared to here. Right. But the fact that it has been dated uh, being at least 12,000 years ago opens the door for um, academics having to look at sites in Peru, Bolivia, Egypt, and some other parts of the world as being at least the same age, if not older.